Hey everybody, it's Dave Duford here at davidduford.com where I help insurance agents like you become top producing insurance professionals. Today I'm doing another interview with a couple of fellas that seem to be doing good work in the Facebook final expense lead generation business. So I'm going to jump in and uh, let them introduce themselves. And uh, guys, why don't you uh, tell us about yourself and your company and what you do. Yeah, what's up, guys? What's up, David? Thank you for having us on. Uh, my name is Jerry. This is Justin, and we are uh, final expense leaders. Uh, as you said before, we're mostly marketing strategists, and we kind of jumped into the insurance world actually relatively recently and been working to help insurance agents, like mostly independent agents, really learn about Facebook advertising and be able to market and acquire those leads themselves without really relying on third-party vendors. Having a little bit more control over costs and what the potential clients actually seeing on Facebook. Right, so you're kind of in the situation, to clarify for our, our uh, audience, that you are not in the lead selling business, you are in the teach the agent how to be the lead generator business. Right, right, right. kind of teach them how to be self-dependent and uh, be able to kind of show them the skills because you know starting Facebook advertising is not something that you just like, hey, I want to be a Facebook advertising agent tomorrow. You know, there are some specialized skills that can really accelerate that you know, that path. So that's, that's kind of where we step in. Yeah. We just never really wanted to be in the lead selling business. There's quite a few vendors out there and just thought that there were agents that needed to learn the skill themselves. So bringing that to them. So let's, let's talk about why agents should sell, um, with Facebook leads. You know, <clears throat> if you've watched a lot of my content, I'm a big believer in direct mail for the most part as being the premier source of leads. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Facebook leads, I've seen good results with, but um, aren't necessarily, in my opinion, on the, the, the same level as direct mail. So kind of tell me what the advantages would be as to why an agent would consider doing his own lead generation utilizing Facebook. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, direct mail, this, and now this is a hot topic and a, a great conversation right now. So um, for direct mail, obviously the, the intent of a person when they get a direct mailer, they see a direct mailer and they're reading it out and they're filling out information and they're sending it back to you. The intent for them is obviously very high. Um, and that's why people are paying, you know, top dollar for these leads because the intent obviously is there. And that translates directly over to Facebook. What is the intent of the advertisement that's being placed in front of this person? So now when you purchase leads from lead vendors who are using Facebook advertisements, you have no idea what that ad is saying. It's like, hey, Beth, like who wants to run a trip to Jamaica today? You know, <laughs> you know, fill out your information down below. And, you know, then they sell these leads for $15. They're acquiring them for two and people call them and they're terrible. Now, on the other side, you know, these, if you can put, you know, high intent quality content up where people are reading and they know exactly what they're opting into, um, now the, the advantage is speed. You know, you get this opt-in, this person is on Facebook, they opt in to this message, they know exactly what they're opting into, and you get that contact information instantly. So you can pick up the phone, you can call them, it could literally be 10 seconds later where you call a person and say, hey, you know, I just saw you acquired, and now they recall doing all this stuff. They're like, oh yeah, I just did that. So it's not, it doesn't seem, you know, salesy. It doesn't seem that there's, there's more of a trust bond there. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, I guess that's, you know, I've, I've been trying to think about what my gripes are with purchased Facebook leads. Mm -hmm. because that's what most agents are buying, right? They're going to these vendors and there's a lot of them. There's more every day that are selling yeah. you Facebook leads and sometimes at reasonable prices. But what I have found when I've worked the leads, when I've had agents who've worked the leads, you'll hear weird things like people will swear they never requested the information. And it's not like I didn't fill the card out and there's my signature on it. It's like a, it's an emphatic, you know, denial. And then you'll have people who say, and again, I, maybe you can shed some light on this to kind of clarify that point, which I think is very important. I've had people say, yeah, well, I guess I was filling out some 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 giveaway for a free ipad or you know for yeah. some free vacation or something can you kind of clarify i mean is that something that's actually happening it it, it does happen it's not anything that, that we promote because again we like i said like the, the and we're looking on the agent side okay you have a person and they're getting in two dollar leads okay they're ecstatic but they're on the phone talking to these people that are expecting an iPad or a vacation. That is a terrible, miserable day to try to sell these people on insurance or something when they filled out an application for, you know, a vacation, as opposed to paying, you know, eight or $10 for a quality lead that they acquire themselves. 
Um, and now this lead knows exactly what they're opting into. They know that they're talking about final expense. They are literally clicking saying, I am expecting a call from insurance agent. So when that insurance agent calls them and you put a code question in there, like, what is your code word? Now all of these things layered on top of each other builds that trust. Um, so when you actually do call, the person's like, oh, hey, John, thank you for calling me. Now, I can, now you can give me the information. Um, yeah. And, and you're absolutely right. A lot of people will most likely remember filling something out if they took the time to do it over filling out something on the internet, especially if these Facebook leads were generated weeks ago and now somebody has to remember, oh, they clicked on something and filled out their information. But that's where teaching you how to do it and having that speed we talked about a little bit earlier to see right as they do it. Um, and we find the highest conversion rates on Facebook leads are being able to call within a few minutes to the first couple hours of them filling it out. It just has the recall is so much higher. And the only way you can do that is if you're the one running your own leads. And there's actually a new feature that's actually we've been utilizing. Uh, it's really cool. So inside of the a lead form inside Facebook. So they're filling out. You see an advertisement. Uh, that advertisement takes them to a sheet where they're filling out information. They opt in, say, I'm expecting a call. And then it goes to like a thank you screen, what you would think of. Now, if they're on a mobile device, at the bottom of that mobile device will actually be an area for them to click a button and it can directly call the agent. So, and this, and this happens maybe 20 to 30% of the time where the person gets to the thank you screen and it says, hey, just get your quote now. Just hit this button down here at the bottom. They click the button and then it goes straight to the, the agent's cell phone. And that's just magical, you know, as I'm sure you know, because now they're calling you to request information. Right. Now you're driving in inbound traffic, which is always the, uh, the cream of the crop in any kind right, of lead right. generation business, right? Yeah. I, I'll add one more thing just because I think it's worth noting for agents watching this. The, the purpose of intent is so important, guys. You know, I talk about a lot of this with direct mail even. You know, why do people send a card back? Do they do it because they're interested in life insurance or they're interested in state-regulated final expense programs, right? There's going to be a different reason why people do things. And I think you guys hit the nail on the head when it comes to intent for any kind of lead. I think this is a fundamental. I think you guys would agree. The intent should be clear. And it should be for the interest in life insurance or final expense insurance, not for a bribe, not for a free trip or an iPad, because right. that's when you get the complaints and the junk and the... 100%, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and that's even like a potential customer that may have opted into a very clean, high intent lead. They hopped it into an iPad, and now, instead of selling them, they're upset. You know, it's, you know, it totally flips the script on you. And that's one thing we really try to preach, too, is that you can go out there, and there's certain ad copies and headlines that will get you leads for a dollar, two, or even three, but if you put it on there exactly what you're getting, and even if that ad cost goes up to $10, $11, you're closing such a higher percentage of that, it's, it makes it so much worth it to do it that way. A lead is not a lead. I never <laughs> believed that old phrase. I think that's old, tired out, and I think you guys have made the point too well for me. So, okay, I got an objection for you. You know, um, here's the deal. Uh, yeah. I can hear people right now agreeing with everything you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't want to work iPad, free iPad leads for life insurance. Yep. Uh, I want to work high intent leads. Yep. But they pull up Facebook and they go look at how to start an ad and they quit because they don't know anywhere where to start. So my question to you is, how difficult actually is this process to start an ad? Is it something that takes you know, weeks of study? Is it difficult to manage? Give me kind of a broad brush idea of what it would take if, if, if a regular person could do it to do their own ads? Oh, yeah, the answer to that question is it's extremely easy and difficult at the same time. Um, it's kind of like anything, there's a bit of a learning curve and if you find tutorials or videos that are showing you how to do it, it becomes very easy. But if you try and do it yourself and you're going through Facebook and you're, you haven't even found any sort of direction and you get on there, you're gonna be confused and you're gonna be spinning your wheels for weeks at a time. So kind of a two-edged sword. Yeah, I think that, you know, that and the, the strategy concepts behind Facebook advertising, because we all have like an ego and a concept behind what we think will work, right? And we put up, we say, oh, I know exactly what picture is going to work, and I know exactly what um, text is going to work. And this is where all the people getting into this make mistakes. And I made the mistake for years, literally years before I was like, okay, I'm just going to base it strictly off data and the statistics and the numbers. And even if I hate the advertisement and it's working and it's performing, it's giving me great leads, that's the advertisement I put out. Um, and I'm going to stick to advertisements like that and branch out from there and learn from what's working. And I think too, uh, not too many people talk about this, but a lot of 
what works for direct mail that's getting people to work, just turn that into a digital form and have that be the ad that you show. Yeah, it's a really good point. You know, if an ad works in one medium, it's probably going to work in another one too, you know? Exactly. So now, again, another objection. Yeah. Um, when an agent wants leads, he can just go buy them, right? He knows what he's going to pay. He knows what the price is going to be. It's kind of like when you buy a fixed price direct mail lead, you know what it's going to be regardless of response rate, but the same kind of rules apply here. There is the potential, right, for a risk that you're going to spend a lot of money and not get the kind of returns or possibly pay more for your lead. So what I'd like you guys to do is address how much of a concern that is. And if, if it's not, what one can do to overcome some of that initial concern of paying too much per lead. Yeah, I, I think that that is a concern and that's, that's a very rightful concern and something that people should know. And, and as we touched on in the, what we were talking about before, this is not something that you should jump into and type in text and put up a picture that you think works and not watch any tutorials and not listen to anybody and hit play and put $100 a day on it because you will just smoke that money and it will be gone. Um, now on the flip side with relatively decent strategy, I mean, we, we have a, we have people in our group now that are not part of like any paid thing that just strictly watch our YouTube videos and they're able to get ads up and running and they're producing leads between six and $12 for good intent leads for not generic crappy leads, just from a couple of hours of tutorials. So the, the information is there, you know, the information you can grab it, you can see it, but it does take like anything, you have to learn this stuff. Like you wouldn't go into, uh, you wouldn't expect an agent to pick up a phone call and be able to close leads at a high rate without any training. You know, it's the same concept. You have to learn this stuff. It is a skill. You know, I think I'll add in here about developing the skill set to market. You know, it's, if you look at it like uh, the sales process, right? We get paid a large fee to sell somebody a policy. And there's a reason why it's, we get paid a large fee is because not everybody can do it. And mm -hmm. likewise, if everybody could easily access Facebook and it was super simple, flip a switch, it would be so crowded that the pricing to actually run ads would be uh, not worth it, right? So just like anything in life that's worth having, you got to put time and effort into it and develop the skill set. But by the sound of it, you know, if you do well with Facebook leads, I think you guys would agree to cut out the middleman and probably the 100% plus markup can have a substantial effect on your business. Yeah, I mean, it is coming, becoming significantly easier. Uh, and I did want to touch on a point about you talking about overcrowded markets. Um, what Facebook does, their number, one, uh, their number one asset is the consumer who consumes Facebook. So if you put up an advertisement and it's not very good, Facebook will see that people are not responding to your advertisement. So it is going to raise your costs way up and drop your impressions way down. Because you, David, as a consumer, if you see 10, 10 advertisements in a row that you don't like, you're gonna get off Facebook, you're gonna leave. And they lose your attention, which is their only asset. So really, Facebook does that to protect you from you know, destroying yourself and them from destroying their business. So there is that kind of protection wall in there. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Facebook's interested in its own ends and, and that's keeping its client base happy. It should be at least. Yeah. That's where they get all their data after all. Yeah. So, so question, uh, let's think about selling final expense in the process. What have your experience been with the medium in which final expense has been sold? Do you see agents who self-generate their own Facebook leads? Do you see them more successful selling face-to-face? or selling over the phone? Is there that much of a difference? Can you just kind of describe kind of what you've seen with your type of leads when the agent actually is generating them? Yeah, from the students we have, there's a big mix of telesales and people that'll actually go and door knock. And um, there's a couple different things that can be implemented. So um, a lot of people will use Calendly and they'll put it inside of their lead form. So instead of having them call them, some people will book their own appointments. It's not a crazy high amount of number, but about 20 to 30 percent of people will book their own appointments. And then what you can do if you're a door knocking agent, you just take that as them booking their own appointments and you show up at their door at that time. And it usually ends up resulting pretty well. Um, but we haven't had really any sort of um, any less sales for people doing telesales, especially because they're right there ready to make the call as soon as the person fills out that lead. So, yeah, I think to be like perfectly transparent, we don't have 
uh, stats for you to specifically say, hey, David, this is what we can see. Um, but from the, from the feedback we're getting from people, um, we're, we're having telesales agent, we're having door knockers, and everyone seems to be having a pretty solid experience for the, again, high intent quality leads. Wonderful. So uh, next question here. So again, one, one really important thing I talk about with my agents all the time is the beauty of final expense is in its scalability, right? So when one agent gets started in this business and they start off, say, with 20 leads and they start doing well, but maybe they want to make more income. They literally have not to change a thing except the amount and volume of leads they buy and, of course, the activity that they have. My question for you is if we have somebody, not just over the phone, but face-to-face too, what's the capability for somebody to scale this? And how, how long would it take to maybe have an ad that's performing well that you know, you're making, you know, you're getting 20 leads a week from, how long can it take to go up to 50? Is it, is it like a week process, month process? What, what can the agent expect regarding scalability with these leads? So I, I'll take this one to start with. Um, in our group, we actually ran a contest for 50 free leads. And <clears throat> granted, I have more experience with Facebook than a lot of people just starting out do. But I started the campaign on Monday at like five and we had 50 leads two days later. So it's very scalable. Um, you can start out, once you're confident in your ad copy, you can start out your ad budgets at, 100 125 dollars per day bringing in anywhere from like 10 to 15 leads um, but we do suggest with new people starting out start it out at like 50 dollars a day and then increase your ad budget at about 15 percent and that won't increase the cost per lead that's the number that facebook likes they don't want to see you go from 50 dollars a day up to thousand dollars a day because then all of a sudden they're just going to make your price per lead go up so there's a few different things that facebook wants you to look at but um, it's relatively easy to scale it and there's lots of people that are doing massive numbers with Facebook. Yeah, and I think I, I just want to like hammer that point home that Justin was saying for those people out there listening or looking to apply these. 15% increase 24 to 36 hours. Don't go any more than that because you, you, want, you want to think of Facebook as like a stream of data that is pulling. And when you put a big ripple in that stream of data that it's, it's saying, okay, Jerry, I, have, I understand what you're asking me for, and I can start picking these people out and acquiring them for you. When you ask them to triple that in a second, your ad pretty much crashes. So rule of thumb, 15% every 24 to 36 hours to scale. Yeah, and if you do the math, it ain't going to take that long to scale, you know, a 15% right. increase a day. So wonderful. Okay. Now, I know you guys have a background more in marketing. I don't know if you have actually sold insurance. So if you don't know really the best answer to this question, that's totally fine. But I know a lot of my audience will think, well, okay, I know that if I switch different kinds of leads up, I get different types of, of quality. When I say quality, like the backgrounds in which we get people. Like with direct mail, you know, you get a good mixture of people who fit a final expense demographic. They may make 1000 a month or less they're on social security, they don't have much savings. Uh, whereas telemarketing leads can tend to skew a little bit lower quality as far as economics go. So I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to ask you guys is what kind of backgrounds as far as socioeconomic uh, yeah. status are you pulling with Facebook leads? How do they compare to say direct mail, maybe that being the most popular? Are they wealthier? Are they poorer? Are they mixed? What's kind of been yeah. the feedback you've seen? Yeah, this is, this is a really cool thing about Facebook is actually you can, you can see a lot of this data and you can actually target specific demographics of people, which makes it really nice um, if you're trying to target a, a specific demographic of people. Now, they used to be able to directly target income, which would just really hammer home exactly who you want as far as an income range. They took that feature away, uh, but you can kind of manipulate that by some of the other features. Uh, for example, if you went with people who um, you can do like a mile rate like a very so if you knew a bad neighborhood or a good neighborhood you can target that area you could target people who recently went on vacation you can target people who drive BMWs you can yeah you can target education people who graduated college uh, people who didn't graduate college or didn't even attend college so there's a lot of ways to really manipulate that if you're trying to really isolate a specific person yeah it's, it's absolutely amazing what you can do with Facebook it's uh, the, the amount of data is just incredible and like you said too that's one thing I've seen you know, you don't have income filters anymore, but final expense agents can easily know. They know their neighborhoods, the zip codes that are best. So I imagine yep. just targeting zips or a radius around just fine. Yeah. So uh, I know we kind of, as we wrap up and get to the end of this, a couple more questions, really one last question. Um, 
we've hit on these a little bit. If you wanna kind of make sure we cover everything for the audience, make sure they understand exactly the most important factors. What are the most important factors to a successful final expense Facebook campaign as far as like the content or the, the, the ad itself, like image, content, copy, what matters most and what agents should, what they should be looking at to get the best outcomes? Yeah, so for final expense, really, you're, you're not getting crazy with your targeting because you're targeting a certain age and above. Um, for people that are interested in insurance, mostly we target, we, we like to target parents, married, or widowed or anything like that, that would actually imply somebody that would be interested in insurance. So targeting is somewhat important, but I would say the actual ad being shown, the content is. Um, your image is very important with Facebook because it, it needs to create a pattern interrupt. They really need, people at that age range aren't as scrolling as fast as a lot of us are, or really young people are. They scroll through their phones so fast. So you have a little bit of a uh, benefit there because they're not scrolling quite as quickly, but you still need something that's gonna grab their attention as far as the picture, because that's the main thing they're seeing. And then once you grab their attention, you need to make sure that the actual text you're showing them makes sense to what they wanna see and what they'll be clicking for, like we already talked about before. And that's where I suggest anybody getting started with this that doesn't really know what to put, go find some direct mailers that you've used and use a similar amount of text, or type of text for that. And also, yeah, to add on that point, with Facebook ads, it's not really good to do paragraphs of information. You want to space it out and have it look nice too. Maybe throw in a couple emojis. That usually ends up working pretty well. Emojis work with the old people too. Uh, yeah. They do. Yeah. It tends yeah. To work. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Not not crazy though. Not crazy emojis, yeah, guys. Don't get nuts with it. <laughs> yeah. No sirens, explosions, stuff like that. Just little check marks are nice. Little diamonds are okay. Nothing too aggressive. Yeah. Excellent, guys. Well, uh, I appreciate your time going over this with me. Um, I have marginal Facebook experience, but I'm probably just as lack of verse in it as the next guy. And so a lot of this has been pretty informative. Yeah, I, I did have one thought to like kind of close on for, for those people who are like you and they're, they're thinking about it and, you know, they're like, do I dip my toe in? You know, do I leave the direct mail? What do I do? Um, and they're kind of in this, this point of indecision. Uh, and I want you to think about, you know, how mailing it is. And I'm not knocking on mailing because I've never done mailing. I don't have any experience with it. And I've heard good things except the lead cost is high. That's, that's it. So, um, you know, you, you look into your mailbox and I don't know about your mailbox, David, but my mailbox is like freaking stacked to the gills. So the, the cost of those leads to the acquisition of those people actually reading that is going to continue to rise just as with Facebook. You know, the Facebook cost of an acquisition of a person is going to continue to rise as more people dive into this market. But as of right now, the acquisition of a person is relatively cheap and you have the advantage of the speed. So if, if someone has that letter, they're, they're writing out the letter, they're like, oh, final expense insurance, this is a great idea. They send that letter in and as they're sending that in, they get hit with a Facebook advertisement that has a call now button and they hit the call now button and they call an agent instantly. You have not lost to that person that, that can beat you with speed of Facebook, um, which is one of the massive advantages. So um, I definitely think diversifying, I'm not saying leave, but uh, definitely diversify, get some more information. And I think it's a, a great avenue that's going to continue to really grow over, I think in the next six months, uh, there's going to be a lot of this stuff coming out. Yeah, I'll add too, you know, I've watched a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm sure you guys do too. And one thing he says over and over again is how cheap it is to acquire leads or just really market on Facebook because the big corporate entities aren't plowing their multi-million dollar marketing budgets yet yeah. into right. Facebook, but they're gonna. And it's just a matter of time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, our problem in final expense with the high lead price is really the problem across all direct mail. It's not just final expense. It's everybody who's relied on a postcard-based system or post their mailing-based system mm -hmm. is getting crushed on yep. leads. And it's not ending in sight anytime soon. Whereas right now, yeah, I mean, a couple of bucks different, you know, a couple of bucks for a lead is killer. Especially yeah. if you can get the intent, you can control the quality of what the lead says and yeah. the kind of response that you get. There's a big difference in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Our quality leads are coming in just for you guys that are wondering at between six and ten dollars. That's a, a high quality lead is what we're getting, what we're generating with good intent. Um, just if people were out there wondering. Yeah, and, and that's way less than what you'll find with any sort of vendor. They're gonna mark it up a hundred, two hundred percent. I used to sell avatar telemarketing leads when they were legal and that's what I did. I marked it up a hundred percent. So yeah. you know, uh expect to be paying you know, we do the math, you know, for the price of 
30 leads, you might be able to do 60 to 90 on your own yeah. and control the quality. You know, so yeah. there's a lot to be said about that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, now is now is definitely a time. I think the next 12 to 18 months is really, really going to be a hot striking period for this for this particular market until this again it wears into a direct mail where it's you know there's a lot of people in it and you know whatever the next thing is is most likely going to be related to Facebook or online based marketing. So um, it's definitely a good skill to start learning now and, and sharpen up on. Wonderful. Well, guys, why don't you uh, tell my audience where they can learn more about your uh, program, your products, and kind of what you do to help agents? Yeah, so we have a YouTube channel called Final Expense Leaders, and then we have a free Facebook group where we go in and show all of our YouTube videos and then answer anybody's questions and give them some advice, throw out some tips and tricks in there. And Yeah, that's, the, that's definitely the best place is uh, to check out our Final Expense Lead Eagles uh, Facebook group. You will have to get in there and, and get the invite, but that's the best place where you can ask all kinds of questions and there's tons of agents doing the exact same thing. Um, we do have some programs that we're rolling out right now that are in beta tests, so we're gonna keep those kind of under wraps right now. Going very, very well, uh, our first round, but uh, yeah, the best thing, hop in that Facebook group, check out our videos on YouTube. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you subscribe to their channel too and uh, the link will be in the description box. Make sure you share this as well with anybody that you know that sells final expense or is thinking about it. They need to see this video because this is uh, kind of on the leading edge of some major things to come over the next five to 10 years, and it's a good time to invest in your skill set and uh, in return, lower the cost and increase the quality of your final expense leads. My name is David Dufort at daviddufort.com. Y'all take care. See ya.